Here goes Kovacic. I need Werner to make the run, man. I really need Werner to make that run. He's finally made the run. Here goes Timo Werner. Big chance for him. He's managed to bamboozle the defender, and that's Timo Werner. This could lead to something. Still, Timo Werner has to be a goal. It is a goal. Timo Werner with his second goal in a Chelsea shirt. So, we're back again with another episode of the Chelsea Career Mode series. This is episode number three. Last episode was big for us because we completed the signing of Timo Werner. We've brought him from RB Leipzig. It was a big money move, but we've made it happen. And not just that, we also managed to sign Hideki as our backup keeper. Our transfer business is not done yet. We've got about 55 million left in the bank. We've still got to sign a right back. And that's probably what we're going to be doing in today's episode. And to spice things up, we take on Liverpool at Anfield in the Carabao Cup. I'm not too sure if I'm looking forward to this one. It's at Anfield as well. That's going to be tough. Wolves in the Premier League, transfer deadline day. A lot's going to happen in this episode. So we're going to get through more transfer business, more games, transfer deadline day and a lot more. So a lot's going to go down in this episode. And if you guys are enjoying the Chelsea career mode, keep the support coming in. Drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new around here. And well, let's get this underway. Time for a press conference. And if you guys want to see your questions being answered, drop them down in the comment section below. First one of the day. Now that Timo Werner has been signed, has Tammy Abraham's future been decided? Is he staying or leaving? Tammy Abraham is going nowhere. I feel he's a quality striker to have at the club. There's absolutely no need for us to let him leave, especially considering we've only got two strikers at the moment. I mean, if you count Murata, we do have three, but I'm looking to offload him. So Timo Werner is going to be the main man for us this season, our first choice striker. But that doesn't mean we're going to not use Tammy Abraham. In fact, in the Carabao Cup, in the FA Cup, probably even in the Europa League, Tammy Abraham is going to be very, very useful to us as a backup player. Plus, you never know with injuries, man. Timo Werner could pick up a long-term injury and then Tammy Abraham will have to assume his role. So, he's going to pay, play a pretty big part of our setup. So, yeah, he's going nowhere. Next question. Defensively, have a look at N'Golo Kante. To make the most of his abilities, put him on aggressive interceptions, giving you a greater chance of winning the ball back higher up the pitch. That is a very good shout. So first of all, I want to put him on stay back while attacking because it just makes sense to have one player just cleaning things up for us. And that player is going to be Kante. We're also going to be putting him on aggressive interceptions and seeing how that works. I also want him to be in a central position. So these are going to be Kante's instructions and hopefully they'll work well for us. Now, this next comment is definitely a big one for the series. Sign Hakimi. He's a quality player. He can play as a right back and a left back and he's extremely versatile. I think we know a lot about his versatility because in game he is now a right midfielder, which means he can play anywhere basically on the wings. And the fact that his stats are just outrageously good just makes me want to bring him in. Like, look at that pace. 94 acceleration, 97 sprint speed. He would fit right in our team and would solidify our defense in a brilliant way. But the problem with this signing is he's going to cost us an obscene amount of money. He's valued at 40 million right now. And we've got just about 56 to maybe 60 million. If we can sell Morata as soon as possible, we might be able to bring Hakimi in. You know what? I want to make him my main target now for the rest of this window because I think having him means that, you know, our defense will be just insane. Him and Reese James rotating for that spot would just be class. And I don't recall using Hakimi, at least in a long time. So you know what? This would be a cool signing to make. You guys seem to want it. Ashraf Hakimi to Chelsea. Let's try and make it happen. But with that press conference wrapped up, let's move on. Timo Werner had a stellar last episode. The fact that we just signed him in the last one and he's already firing goals left, right and center is crazy. We've only scored two goals in the series so far and both have come from Timo Werner. Just goes to show how good he is. Everybody in the comments section wanted him to win the player of the episode award. So Timo Werner wins the award. Looking at our transfer budget at the moment, I'm wondering if it's even possible to sign Ashraf Hakimi. Maybe not at this point. We certainly need a few players to be sold. We've transfer listed Victor Moses, whose negotiations are going on. If he gets sold quickly, we might be able to sign Hakimi. The same with Murata. I guess we're going to have to wait a tad bit before we can make the move on Ashraf Hakimi. So I guess we're going to do exactly that. Here's a quick look at our season objectives. I definitely want to start making some progress with our objectives, particularly the ones with Pulisic and also Billy Gilmore, because he is going to be playing in this game against Liverpool at Anfield. Let's hope he can have a good game. So that's going to be key for our objectives. Honestly, how unlucky are we to actually draw Liverpool in the first round of the Carabao Cup? 
it is what it is, I suppose. Now, in the Carabao Cup, I'm going to be using this competition to use our youngsters, regardless of who we're facing. So expect to see the likes of Billy Gilmore all in the lineup. Since this is a cup game against Liverpool at Anfield, I'm going to be rotating this squad. As I said, we're going to be using the second team for this one. As I promised, Billy Gilmore is starting this one. Mason Mount is in there. Tammy Abraham, Hudson, Adoy starts. Baka Yoko gets his first appearance of the season. Yanusai gets a chance to shine again. We've got Christensen in the lineup. I think we should make Marcus Alonso the captain for the team for this one. He's probably the most experienced player in here. So that's the team we've got against Liverpool at Anfield. I'm not too sure what to expect from this, but if these guys can get the job done and knock out Liverpool, that'd be insane. Now, my objective for the Carabao Cup is to just give youngsters an opportunity. So as long as we can have a good performance, I'm cool. Honestly, Liverpool are shameless, man. Like, what even is this lineup? In the Carabao Cup, why are they going with their first team? I just don't get it. They're literally signing every good player possible. Salah, Mane, Firmino, Trent, all of them are in here. It'll be a miracle if we can survive this game and get past Liverpool. Mo Salah goes backwards for Trent. And now, well, this is why Liverpool can get really threatening. Cross comes in. Christensen got a crucial touch to it there and we're struggling to get it away still. Here's Wijnaldum now on the ball. We can't really do much against Wijnaldum. Brilliant challenge from Christensen again. We survive conceding there, but man, Liverpool's pressure is just crazy. Are they going to score from there? I'm struggling to, you know, even pass out from our own half. It's, it's, it's been a difficult game so far. Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool are just so difficult to play against. Oh, problems here for us again. Andy Robertson looks for Mane. This is just too good. Liverpool are just unbelievable. Hideki with an outrageous save there. That's unbelievable there from Hideki. I thought we were 1-0 down. Liverpool going all guns blazing in this one. And we're struggling to contain them with basically our second team. Looks for Mason Mount. We need a big game from him. Inside for Billy Gilmore. What a chance this is for Billy Gilmore. He's actually scored. I cannot believe it. Billy Gilmore. I mean, I guess there's a reason why you guys have been calling him the English Chavi. Because he is outstanding. First involvement in the game in a proper way. And he's just banged this one home. Completely against the run of play. I'm not going to lie. Liverpool don't deserve to concede. Because we've been appalling in this one. But one chance. It falls to Billy Gilmore. The youngster. The homegrown talent. And he bangs this one home. Unbelievable scenes, man. Billy Gilmore, take a bow. Against Liverpool, at Anfield to do that at that age, that's going to be a moment he'll never forget. Come on, we've got a push from this. The confidence in these players now is going to be sky high. I feel we can cause an upset here and knock out Liverpool. Henderson, Fabinho now. Good ball, oh, big challenge there from Tomori to save us from conceding. If we can go into halftime at a 1-0 scoreline... We'll be in a great spot. Again, have a look at that goal from Billy Gilmore. Nobody would have expected the youngster to pop in with a finish like that. Quality stuff there from him. Hopefully, that's just the first of many goals and a Chelsea shirt for him. Halftime against Liverpool and we're in a great spot. I mean, nobody would have predicted us leading this game 1-0 before the game because we've been in a difficult spot right now. In the Premier League, we're not doing so well. We've only won one game. But here on the pitch against Liverpool, we've competed from start up until now. Let's keep it going in the second half as well. We know how good they are with their build-up play and all. Here's Robertson, looks for Mane. I'm not liking the look of this. We've got to defend this brilliant challenge again from Tomori. I am so glad we brought him back here at Chelsea. Billy Gilmore again, holding off Fabinho brilliantly. Releases hudson Adoy. Ah, oh, that pass was a bit too much, but... Man, holding off Fabinho isn't easy at all and Billy Gilmore is holding his own against the Liverpool midfield. Oh, here we go again. Bakayoko looks for Tammy Abraham. Takes a good touch forward. Back to Bakayoko. This could result in some... I'm an idiot, guys. I'm an absolute idiot. I don't know why I went for the sweaty cross there. I thought that was the best way to score. I completely messed up a free goal. Oh, I'm such an idiot. That should have been a 2-0. Oh, Tammy Abraham, though. Gets past Virgil van Dijk. Tammy Abraham could score. No way. Rebound he couldn't control. What a chance again. Gone. A couple of fantastic opportunities in the space of a few minutes. And we haven't been able to convert any of them. The positive is we're creating chances against one of the best teams in the world. Let's keep pushing. I think we can knock them out. Oh, Reese James has been unbelievable in this game. One of the best players on the pitcher. Looks for Yanisza, who's been a bit absent in this one. But now, he's got a chance to cause havoc here. Here he goes on the attack, but gets pushed off so easily. Yanisza lacks way too much pace. And that's going to be a problem when we try and use him this season. Pace is king on FIFA 20. I'm sure everybody knows that. So, oh, he's got to do better. Mo Salah on the ball. I'm not liking this. Not at the death of the game. Referee, blow the whistle. Referee, blow the whistle. No need for that because Radecki has just saved us. 
in the depths of added time. Unbelievable, Radecki. This guy, man, he was outstanding for us at Bayer Leverkusen and he's bringing that here at Chelsea. He might actually end up keeping Kepa out of the team because what he's just done here is just outrageous. I expected to concede there and go into extra time, but he's just saved us there. Unbelievable, man. How have we walked away with the win from this one? Because Liverpool definitely had the better chances, especially in the first half. But ultimately, Billy Gilmore coming up clutch. I cannot believe he's actually scored the goal that he scored. But that goal takes us to the next round. It's a big moment for his Chelsea career to score at Anfield. And to knock out Liverpool like that is just unbelievable. What a moment in this series. Let's keep pushing. That, that This win is going to give us a lot of confidence. I am pretty sure Hideki already made his debut in the last episode, but hey, question comes in, what do you make of such a strong debut? I'll just say it's clear to see why I brought him in. He was probably man of the match, as good as probably Billy Gilmore, and yeah, pretty impressive. Do you feel like you can win the Carabao Cup? That's, it's, it's too early for a verdict, that's exactly what I'm going to say. Also, I did check after the game, Billy Gilmore's uh, passing stats for that game. He did not quite have the 90% passing stats, so... We're gonna have to wait further until we start completing those objectives, so he still had a great game though, so can't complain at all. We still haven't managed to sell Victor Moses, or even Morata for that matter, so no added funds coming in. We might actually end up having just about 54 million to spend, so you know what? I'm gonna just go in with an offer, and see how much we're gonna have to pay to get Hakimi to, of course, um, Chelsea. Let's see if it's even possible with the funds we've got. Time to negotiate! with Zizou. So I'm going to start off with a 40 million offer, which is pretty much his valuation. Let's see if Zidane is willing to entertain this. He's going to counter with 53. Okay. Okay. We might be able to afford him now. In fact, we will. Let's still counter. Let, let's try and get him for cheaper now, because I think Zidane is eager to sell him. 46 with a 10% sell-on clause. Okay. This is a bargain, guys. I'm not even going to lie. This is a proper bargain for Hakimi. I expected to pay a lot more for him, but we're getting him for a good price, we can afford him, and he'll now make our team instantly better. 47.8 million for Ashraf Hakimi just seems like a fabulous transfer. The job is not done yet, though we've still got to get the contract negotiations sorted. So, of course, crucial squad role, that's exactly what his demands are. Apart from that, five-year contract length is well, we'll accept that. And no release class works perfectly for me. I have no intention of letting her keep me leave. Now time for the wages. This is where things could get interesting. Let's offer him the same. You know what? Let's try offering him 130 and maybe like 600,000 in a signing bonus just to see and test the waters. That, that's actually worked. He's willing to take a pay cut to join Chelsea from Real Madrid. This needs to be fixed in FIFA 21. We shouldn't be able to do stuff like that. Anyways, we can do it in FIFA 20, so... We'll take Hakimi, another fantastic transfer here at Chelsea. Here we go, Chelsea win race for Ashraf Hakimi. 84 rated right midfielder. Also guys, quick comment I need from you guys. Should we change his default position to right back? I can do that using the cheat engine. Let me know in the comment section. I guess it'll look a bit better since we are going to play him in that position. Let me know in the comment section. Take a look at that team right now with Ashraf Hakimi in the lineup. Looks absolutely fantastic. I think I'm done with all my transfers for this window. I'm still going to try and get rid of Murata and, of course, Victor Moses in this window. Probably Kennedy as well. That's the plan. But I'll probably use those funds in the January transfer window after getting a good feel of the squad and deciding where exactly we need to make improvements. So this is the team we're going to have until the January transfer window. And you know what? I'm not going to complain. It's class. So with the new signing of Hakimi that we've just made, time to head right into our next Premier League game, which is against Wolves. Now, they've had a pretty decent start to their season with two wins in three games. I mean, it's going to be difficult for us, but we need to beat them, man. We've already dropped way too many points in the Premier League. Let's put out a statement here by beating Wolves away from home at the Molyneux. You guys know I always struggle there at that stadium, so... It is going to be a challenge regardless. It's now time for our game against Wolves at the Molyneux with Hashraf Hakimi making his Chelsea debut. Eager to see what he's got to offer. Apart from that, we've got Timo Werner, Ziyech and basically the first team back in action. Let's try and build momentum from that win against Liverpool. Push on from here and pick up three points against Wolves. I literally hate coming to this stadium to play football at because it is just a struggle. Wolves are so annoying to play against, especially with their three at the back formation. It is just a struggle. Cross comes in, we do get it away, but yeah, this is going to be a long 90 minutes and 
We absolutely need to win the game. And also, they've got one of the most sweaty players in FIFA in Adama Traoré. They almost scored as well, if not for Kepa. This is going to be a struggle. We get that one off him easily without Shraf Hakimi. Exactly why we've signed him. And here's Kovacic now on the attack for us. I could feed this one for Werner. It's a good pass. Werner as well. Can he shoot? He can. Rebound chance for us. Ziyech. Oh, that is a lovely finish from Hakim Ziyech. Scores his first goal in the Chelsea shirt. It's, it was a convenient rebound for us, but I'll absolutely take it. Ziyech scores his first goal for the club. Helps us out with the objectives as well. Timo Werner probably should have got the goal earlier on anyways, but... What a brilliant finish from Ziyech. He still had a lot to do. He still had to be the defender on the line there. The goalkeeper was coming in. There was a challenge on him. A lot of work, but he made that look so easy. Ziyech scores and Chelsea have taken the advantage against Wolves. Let's go. We're playing some good FIFA today. Kovacic looks for Pulisic. We need to see more from him because so far this season he's been a bit average. Yes, Kovacic, though, chance for him. The Croatian has been nothing short of incredible as he earns us a penalty here. Chelsea with a chance to double up their advantage against Wolves. That was an awful challenge on Kovacic. He did really well to hold off the defender. He got frustrated, went for the sliding challenge. No booking for that? What? Anyways, chance for us to make it 2-0. Now, you guys know how awful I am with penalties. And also, I'm thinking we take this one with Pulisic. Let's take this one with Ziyech. Let's take this one with Ziyech. He's got an objective as well. Let's try and complete this Ziyech objective. Go on, score this. Simple penalty. Hakim Ziyech scores his second goal of the season. In the same game, easy penalty. The keeper went the wrong way. Simple stuff. 2-0 against Wolves. This game is going rather well for us because normally games at the Molyneux are always just dreadful. So I'm happy with the way things are going. We can't give up though because I do remember in a previous career mode, I've bottled a 2-0 advantage against Wolves. Doherty could find space. I'm, I'm not liking the look of this. Here's Adama Traore. Oh, he's gotten past me somehow. Looks for the cross. Zuma does incredibly well there to deny Adama. We know how dangerous... Adama Traore is on this game, so we've got to be alert at every instance when he gets the ball. We might be able to conjure up something, though, on a counter-attack. Yes, Kovacic continues to drive forward. Looks for Hakim Ziyech here. Oh, Ziyech has done him there. Hakim Ziyech, absolutely outrageous. Did you guys see that? The roulette sent the defender flying elsewhere, and he completes his hat-trick in the first half itself. Hakim Ziyech, wow. If this is what he can do week in, week out for us, we're in a good spot for the season. I mean, look at that from Ziyech. He gets the ball, the roulette there, does him, and then a lovely finish as well to end off the move. A hat-trick from Hakim Ziyech, a first-half hat-trick. Let's go. We've made it 3-0 against Wolves. Didn't expect this to be this easy, but I'll take it, though. A big win is exactly what we need for our confidence. Since Ziyech has already bagged a hat-trick, let's give him a bit of a rest by bringing him off for Mason Mount. And hopefully Mason Mount can also have a good game in this one. Now it is Adnan Yanezai. Brings it inside. Yanezai goes for goal. But way too much power on it. Would have been his moment. So far I haven't been impressed with Adnan Yanezai. He feels way too slow. His shooting is a bit average. He needs to step up if he wants to remain a Chelsea player. Zuma back to Ben Chilwell. We're playing the ball around really well. Mount with a lovely touch. Now into Timo Werner's part. Big chance for him. Goes for goal and he misses. I think Rui Patricio got a hand to it. Yes he did. Let's try and just whip this ball in from a corner. That never works. Corners just don't work on FIFA 20, man. It's so annoying. Mason Mount going for goal from distance, but yeah, just wide. Still, Yanezai looks for Kovacic. It's a good part. Goes for goal above the crossbar again. We've been so wasteful in the second half because we've had some good chances, but shots have been going above the crossbar or wide. This has got to change in our next game. We've got to be as clinical as possible. Good game, guys. A really, really good game. A good performance all round. Hakim Ziyech back on the pitch to take home the match ball. He was, he was magic in it this game, especially the third goal that he scored. Oh, it was something else. And not just that, our entire performance was superb. Defensively, we were brilliant. And let's just keep this going. So we've now leapfrogged Arsenal, Spurs and Wolves and we're fifth in the Premier League, which is a good spot to be in, especially considering where we were at the start of the episode. And also, we're the best defensive team in the Premier League at the moment, conceding just one goal, although we've got to up the number of goals we score as well. We did a good job on our goal difference, scoring three against Wolves, so a bit of credit for that one, but... Let's keep pushing. Next episode, I want to be in the top four. So we're now on transfer deadline day with 10 hours to go. And I'm not really sure if there's any business we need to do. I mean, we can't really do much business because we've got only 9 million left. But 
Definitely outgoing business is something I'm going to consider. So let's hope we get some offers coming in for some of the players I want to sell. Okay, already a lot of offers coming in within the first hour. Loan offer for Tammy Abraham. I feel like he's going to be playing a big part for us. So I'm going to reject the offer. No need to, you know, loan him out. Offers coming in for Victor Moses and Kennedy. I'm going to accept both offers because I just want to get rid of them as soon as possible. And let's just hope we get a response soon. A loan offer now coming in for Billy Gilmore from Sheffield United. Absolutely no way I'm loaning out Billy. How good he was in that game against Liverpool, man. Outrageously good. Offer coming in for Gallagher as well. I'm willing to loan him out, but I really don't want to sell him because I feel like he's got a lot of talent. That's exactly what you guys have been telling me in the comments section. Now, this is certainly interesting. Inter Milan won Jorginho, and I kind of feel like he's surplus to our requirements at the moment. So... I'm going to negotiate with Inter to see if we can get more money for him. Surely he's worth about 50 million in this current market. So let's counter with exactly 50 million just to see if Inter Milan are willing to pay that amount for him. Uh, they're only willing to pay 39.9. Let's counter then and go up to maybe 45. Come on, man. Just pay 45 million for Jorginho and we'll have a good amount of money left to spend for the next transfer window. Come on, 45 million. Uh, they're not willing to go up any further. You know what? For a 28-year-old to get 40 million for a play that we don't really need, I'll take it. So, yeah, for 40 million, Jorginho is on his way to Inter Milan. Now, this is brilliant. Victor Moses, Kennedy and Jorginho all have been sold and we should have a fair bit of money now in our transfer budget. About 60 million left to spend, which we'll be putting to use in the January transfer window, not now. And for now, we're going to be wrapping up the transfer deadline day. And there you go. Transfer window has come to an end. We've had a great window signing some fabulous players. This is the squad we've got for the rest of the season. Well, until January. And I'm pretty content with it. You know what? I'm ready for the season. Haven't really done much of training so far in this career mode. So we're getting some training sessions in. Billy Gilmore is going to be a player. We're going to give three sessions for now because I want that overall going up as fast as possible. Tammy Abraham and Reese James getting a cheeky session as well. Why couldn't we get an offer for Murata when we were actually in the transfer window? Anyways, outside the window, we get an offer for Murata from Arsenal, about 40 million. Definitely going to negotiate to get more money for Murata. Let's see how that works. I'm thinking about 50 million or so if we can get for him would be class. Let's counter. You know what? To be fair, his value is 33 and they're offering 41. So, you know what? Let's just counter with 50 and see if they're willing to pay that. Considering he's a striker, values are definitely inflated. And well, that's done. Arsenal willing to pay 50 million for Murata. Hopefully that deal will go through. But of course, we'll get the cash only in January. We're going to have a large amount of money to spend in the January transfer window, which is going to make that window a lot of fun to play through. So we're basically done with all our transfer business for a while. And next episode, the focus is going to shift towards... Getting, of course, a new youth scout and going on the hunt for the next DDA drop, but that's the plan. Of course, next episode, the Europa League begins. We've got a game in the Prem against Manchester United. It's going to be a lot of fun. This was a fairly decent episode for our season objectives, courtesy of Hakim Ziyech scoring a hat-trick for us. With that, we've made good progress with the Moroccan Magic Challenge. Also, we are currently the best defensive team in the Prem, so the Mourinho Spirit Challenge is going pretty well, so... Let's keep all this moving. Now time to have a quick discussion about who should win the player of the episode award. Now I think the nominees are clear for this episode. One of them being Hakim Ziyech. You scored a hat-trick. Of course you're going to find yourself in among the nominees. The other one is going to be Billy Gilmore. He scored the winner against Liverpool in a game I thought I was going to lose. And that's why he's got to be nominated. The 19-year-old just has that X factor in him. Already performing for us at the young age and a pretty low overall. So... Fair enough, he gets nominated. It's between the two of them. Let me know in the comments section who should win the Player of the Episode award. But with that, we're wrapping up today's episode of the Chelsea Career Mode series. Next episode, more games, more action. Gonna be a lot of fun. Youth Academy stuff as well. But if you guys are enjoying the Chelsea Career Mode series, keep the support coming in. That helps the channel a lot. Subscribe if you're new around here. Drop a like and well, I'll catch you all next time.